Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus, born Gaius Octavius on September 23, 63 BC, emerged as a pivotal figure in Roman history, leaving an undeniable mark as the founder of the Roman Empire. Originally known as Octavian, he ascended to become the first Roman Emperor. Augustus's reign ushered in a transformative era marked by imperial peace, known as Pax Romana or Pax Augusta, and the establishment of the Principate system of imperial rule. As the first imperial member of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, Augustus would be the architect of the Roman Empire. Octavian hailed from an affluent equestrian branch. His destiny took a monumental turn when his maternal great-uncle Julius Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC, and Octavian was named as Caesar's adopted son and heir. Inheriting Caesar's name, estate, and the allegiance of his legions, Octavian joined forces with Mark Antony and Marcus Lepidus to form the Second Triumvirate. Their united front aimed at avenging Caesar's assassination, leading to the triumphant Battle of Philippi in 42 BC, where they defeated the assassins of Caesar. The initial unity within the Triumvirate eventually dissolved due to conflicting ambitions. Lepidus was exiled in 36 BC, and the pivotal Battle of Actium in 31 BC witnessed Octavian's triumph over Antony, resulting in the latter's demise alongside Cleopatra during Octavian's invasion of Egypt. With the demise of the Triumvirate, Augustus sought to restore the appearance of a free republic, although he retained autocratic authority, securing a lifetime tenure as commander-in-chief, tribune, and censor. Augustus meticulously balanced the restoration of the Roman Republic's facade with centralized power. While ostensibly maintaining a republican structure with the Roman Senate and legislative assemblies, he wielded considerable influence by consolidating titles such as Princeps Civitatis, First Citizen, alongside the revered Augustus. The emperor strategically enlarged the empire, annexing territories such as Egypt, Dalmatia, Pannonia, Noricum, and Raetia. Despite facing setbacks in Germania, Augustus fortified the frontiers with client states and diplomatically engaged with the Parthian Empire. Augustus's reign witnessed extensive administrative reforms. He revamped the Roman tax system, constructed an elaborate network of roads with an official courier system, and bolstered security with the establishment of a standing army and the Praetorian Guard. The Emperor also prioritized the well-being of Rome by instituting official police and firefighting services, undertaking significant reconstruction projects, and investing in urban development. Augustus's death in AD 14 marked the end of an era. While rumors persisted, hinting at foul play orchestrated by his wife Livia, Augustus likely succumbed to natural causes at the age of 75. His legacy endured through the imperial succession plan, as his adopted son Tiberius assumed the mantle of emperor, carrying forward Augustus's vision for the Roman Empire. Augustus stands as an architectural force behind the Roman Empire, steering it through pivotal transitions and leaving an enduring legacy. His political acumen, military prowess, and administrative reforms shaped the foundations of the Roman state, setting the stage for centuries of imperial rule. Augustus's imprint on Roman history is undeniable, and his contributions continue to be studied and revered as a testament to the enduring impact of one of history's most influential leaders. Tiberius Julius Caesar Augustus emerged as a significant Roman emperor, succeeding his stepfather Augustus and reigning from AD 14 to 37. While his military triumphs laid the foundations for the empire's northern frontier, Tiberius's reign was marked by personal struggles, complex relationships, and a unique approach to governance. And ultimately it ended in Tiberius becoming known as the Tyrant Emperor. Born in Rome to Tiberius Claudius Nero and Livia Drusilla in 42 BC, Tiberius navigated a complex family dynamic. His mother's subsequent marriage to Augustus in 38 BC intertwined his fate with that of the future emperor. Designated as Augustus's successor, Tiberius had already distinguished himself as a skilled diplomat and successful military general, having conquered Pannonia, Dalmatia, Raetia, and parts of Germania. Tiberius's early marriage to Vipsania, 
daughter of Augustus's right-hand man, Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, resulted in a son named Drusus Julius Caesar. However, upon Agrippa's death, Augustus commanded Tiberius to divorce Vipsania and marry his own daughter, Julia. Tiberius apparently broke down and begged Vipsania for forgiveness. The resulting marriage created a tumultuous and childless union. Assuming the title of princeps at the age of 55, upon Augustus' death in 14 AD, Tiberius faced the challenges of leading the Roman Empire with reluctance and, some argue, a sense of inadequacy compared to his predecessor. In fact, his coronation was a confusing affair, with Tiberius first refusing the crown, then accepting it, and then refusing it once again. No one knew what was going on, and the whole thing became a bit of an ordeal. When he eventually accepted the crown, things got even worse. Tiberius didn't trust the Senate and was always worried about plots against him. So he began collecting treasonous info on all of Rome's elite, executing them if he so much as felt threatened by someone. This meant that Tiberius himself became incredibly wealthy as he confiscated the riches of the men he executed. As a result of this, Tiberius is often remembered for his effective administrative skills, with Rome's coffers almost overflowing with gold. However, personal losses, including the deaths of his own son Drusus in 23, led to Tiberius becoming increasingly reclusive and aloof. In 26, Tiberius withdrew from Rome, leaving much of the administration to his ambitious Praetorian prefect Seianus, who later faced execution for treason. From the island of Capri, Tiberius lived a life of luxury and scandal. He was the most feared and powerful man in the world, and he got whatever he wanted, even if what he wanted went against Roman morales. Macro succeeded Sejanus, further shaping the political landscape during Tiberius's later years. Tiberius's approach to religious worship was notably restrained. He permitted the worship of his divine genius in a single temple in Rome's eastern provinces and advocated moderation in the empire-wide cult honoring the deceased Augustus. Despite a sumptuous funeral befitting his office, Tiberius did not receive divine honors upon his death. His legacy is remembered as that of a dark, reclusive ruler who, according to Pliny the Elder, never really wanted to be emperor. Upon Tiberius's death, his grandnephew and adopted grandson Caligula assumed the throne, initiating a period marked by extravagant building projects and military endeavors that depleted the wealth Tiberius had accumulated. Tiberius Julius Caesar Augustus left an undeniable mark on Roman history through a complex reign marked by familial strife, political challenges, and a nuanced governing style. While his military accomplishments and administrative prowess were evident, Tiberius's personal struggles and the intricate dynamics of his relationships defined his legacy. Gaius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, known by his infamous nickname Caligula, held the Roman throne from AD 37 until his assassination in AD 41. Born on August 31st, 12, to the illustrious Germanicus and Agrippina the Elder, Augustus's granddaughter, Caligula emerged from the Julio-Claudian dynasty as a figure of both fascination and infamy in Roman history. He would go down in history as the Mad Emperor. Despite being named after Gaius Julius Caesar, Caligula earned his moniker Caligula, meaning Little Boot, from his father's soldiers during their campaign in Germany. The diminutive form, derived from Caliga, a military boot, reflected the youthful Caligula's early exposure to the military life of his father, Germanicus. Tragedy struck the family when Germanicus died in 19, leaving Agrippina and her six children entangled in a bitter feud with the Emperor Tiberius. The conflict ultimately led to the destruction of Caligula's family, with him being the sole surviving male heir. In 26, Caligula joined Tiberius on the island of Capri, where the emperor had withdrawn from public life. Following Tiberius's death in 37, Caligula, at the age of 24, ascended to the imperial throne. 
Early accounts depict him as a noble and moderate ruler during the initial six months of his reign. However, as time progressed, Caligula's demeanor took a dark turn, with descriptions of him as increasingly self-indulgent, cruel, sadistic, and extravagant. It was during this sudden turn that some of Caligula's most famous cases of madness occurred. He had an unusually close relationship with his sisters, something that quickly resulted in his reputation being tarnished with gossip. His sister, Agrippina, didn't help matters. As someone naturally attracted to power, she flirted her way through the royal court. However, with the death of their sister, Agrippina led a plot to assassinate her brother, believing him to become increasingly delusional. Agrippina, along with her sister and brother-in-law's plot failed, with Caligula sending his sisters into exile. Another noticeable example of Caligula's madness came when he tried and failed to invade Britain, with his troops flatly refusing to cross the treacherous English Channel. Caligula therefore decided it was the sea god Neptune's fault and ordered his men to go to war against the god. After the so-called battle, Caligula ordered his men to collect seashells, an example of his victory. It was also around this time that Caligula famously made his horse a consul, much to the bewilderment and confusion of his peers. Caligula's tumultuous reign came to an abrupt end in early 41, when he was assassinated as part of a conspiracy involving officers of the Praetorian Guard, senators and courtiers. Some conspirators may have aimed to restore the Roman Republic and aristocratic privileges, but the Praetorians swiftly appointed Caligula's uncle Claudius as the next emperor. Caligula's death marked the official conclusion of the Julii Caesars in the male line, while the Julio-Claudian dynasty continued until the reign of Caligula's nephew, Nero. Caligula's legacy remains a mosaic of contradictions, with historical accounts portraying him as both a noble ruler and a tyrannical despot. The controversies surrounding his reign underscore the complexities of interpreting ancient sources and the challenges of comprehending the motivations and actions of individuals from distant historical periods. Caligula's life and death continue to captivate scholars and enthusiasts alike, ensuring his place as one of the most enigmatic figures in Roman history. Tiberius Claudius Caesar, Augustus Germanicus, commonly known as Claudius, held the Roman throne from AD 41 to 54. Born on August 1st, 10th BC in Roman Gaul, Claudius emerged as an atypical figure, facing ostracism within his family due to physical ailments. So how did this unlikely emperor end up on the imperial throne? Born to Drusus and Antonia Minor in Lugdunum, Claudius faced adversity early on being afflicted with a limp and slight deafness due to childhood sickness. As a consequence, he was perceived as non-threatening both by the tyrant emperor Tiberius and his nephew Caligula upon ascending to the throne. Consequently, he was largely excluded from public office until Caligula promoted him to the consulship in 37. In his role as consul, Claudius grappled with the challenge of managing the emperor's extravagant spending. However, Attempting to persuade Caligula to curtail his revelries was perilous. Claudius had to adopt a cunning and indirect approach, leading to Caligula reinstating the notorious treason trials of Tiberius to bolster funds. This decision significantly undermined the emperor's popularity, especially among those in his own household who feared for their lives. Claudius's unexpected path to power unfolded after the assassination of Caligula, when the Praetorian Guard, recognizing him as the last surviving adult male of his family, declared him emperor. Despite his lack of experience, Claudius proved to be a capable and efficient administrator. One of Claudius's significant contributions lay in expanding the imperial bureaucracy to include freedmen, thereby fostering administrative efficiency. He played a pivotal role in restoring the empire's finances, countering the excesses of Caligula's reign. Claudius's ambitious nature manifested in extensive construction projects, including the development of roads, aqueducts, 
and canals across the vast expanse of the Roman Empire. His reign also marked the commencement of the successful Roman conquest of Britain. Despite all of these achievements, Claudius was still haunted by how he came to power. He viewed himself as a usurper and so felt a constant need to secure his position. This led to the deaths of numerous senators, tarnishing his reputation among ancient writers. Despite these challenges, more recent historians have re-evaluated his reign, acknowledging his pragmatic approach to governance. The circumstances surrounding Claudius's death at the age of 63 remain contentious. Many historical accounts contend that he was murdered by his wife, Agrippina the Younger, perhaps driven by a desire to pave the way for her son, Nero, to ascend to the throne. Following Claudius's death, his grandnephew and legally adopted stepson, Nero, succeeded him as emperor. While Claudius's rule faced criticism and skepticism from contemporary sources, modern historians have revised their opinions, recognizing his administrative achievements and pragmatic governance. Tiberius Claudius Caesar, Augustus Germanicus, an unlikely emperor, defied expectations and left an indelible mark on Roman history. From overcoming physical challenges to steering the empire through ambitious projects and conquests, Claudius's reign stands as a testament to resilience and adaptability. The controversies surrounding his legacy underscore the complexities of interpreting historical narratives, making Claudius a figure worthy of continued exploration and analysis within the broader context of Roman imperial history. His enduring impact and the re-evaluation of his rule highlight the evolving perspectives on Claudius, prompting ongoing scholarly inquiry into the multifaceted dimensions of his leadership. Nero Claudius Caesar, Augustus Germanicus, the final emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, reigned as the Roman emperor from AD 54 until his dramatic demise in AD 68. Nero would go down in history, not just as the last member of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, but as the emperor who watched Rome burn. Nero was born in AD 37 at Antium, the son of Gnaeus Domitius Ahenobarbus and Agrippina the Younger, a great-granddaughter of Augustus. His father's death when Nero was two led to his mother's marriage to Emperor Claudius, who adopted Nero as his heir. His early life as a member of the imperial household was filled with danger. On more than one occasion, there was attempts on his life. However, each attempt failed, thanks largely in part to his mother usually being two steps ahead of her competitors. In fact, Agrippina spoiled Nero rotten, and was ruthless in her goal of putting him on the imperial throne. After Claudius' death in AD 54, Nero ascended to the throne with the backing of the Praetorian Guard and Senate. In the initial years of his reign, Nero sought guidance from influential figures such as his mother Agrippina, tutor Seneca the Younger, and Praetorian prefect Sextus Afranius Burrus. One of the key moments in his early reign was the Great Fire of Rome. Although legend says Nero played a harp watching his city turn to ash, in reality he was nowhere near and made quite an effort to try to get the fire under control once he was alerted. However, as Nero asserted his independence, power struggles ensued, particularly with his mother. Eventually, Nero had Agrippina murdered, implicating him in the deaths of his wife Claudia Octavia and stepbrother Britannicus. Nero's practical contributions to Rome's governance focused on diplomacy, trade, and culture. He ordered the construction of amphitheaters, promoted athletic games, and participated in various public performances, including acting, poetry, music, and chariot racing. In fact, during one of his performances, the famous General Vespasian fell asleep, causing Nero to go into a frenzy, disgracing the general and sending him into a temporary but early retirement. While these traits endeared him to the lower class citizens, they scandalized the aristocracy, and the financial burdens incurred were resented by the Roman elite. During Nero's reign, the Roman Parthian War of 58-63 unfolded under the command of General Corbulo, resulting in peace with the Parthian Empire. In Britain, the revolt led by Queen Boudicca was suppressed by Roman General Suetonius Paulinus. 
the Bosporan Kingdom briefly joined the Empire, and the First Jewish-Roman War commenced, resulting in Nero calling Vespasian out of retirement in order to quell the uprising. All these wars meant higher taxes, which eventually led to discontent within the Roman Empire. Eventually, Roman Gaul, led by the Roman senator Vindex and the eventual Emperor Galba, revolted and marched on Rome. This led to Nero's declaration as a public enemy. The situation became so dire that everyone in Nero's household abandoned him, leaving him all alone and literally asking where everyone had gone. Fleeing Rome, Nero committed suicide on June 9th, AD 68, sparking the Year of the Four Emperors, a brief period of civil war. The historical accounts of Nero's personality and reign overwhelmingly depict him as tyrannical, self-indulgent and debauched, with accusations of his involvement in the Great Fire of Rome and persecution of Christians. However, some modern historians question the reliability of these sources, considering Nero's popularity among the commoners. Nero Claudius Caesar Augustus Germanicus remains an enigmatic figure in Roman history, his reign marked by contradictions, contributions and controversies. The complex legacy of this last Julio-Claudian emperor continues to be a subject of historical scrutiny, with divergent perspectives shaping the narrative of Nero's life and governance within the intricate tapestry of ancient Roman politics and culture.